I'm a Christian first. I'm an American second. I'm a conservative third, and I'm a Republican fourth. And I'll tell you, there are a whole lot of people in this country that feel exactly the same way, that are fed up with Republican leadership. Let's then spin to issues of real substance in the political wars, because no matter how hard certain people claim the polls tell us the GOP battle is all but over, that's a statement bordering on the radically foolish, according to many people. A corner Ted Cruz, anything but defeated. Jeb Bush may have people looking to bail out on his recent attack, but he may have gained some ground. And the aforementioned Sarah Palin no way guarantees Donald Trump anything but more sound bites opponents can use for fodder. So let's get to it. Contributing writer at Red Alert Politics, Ryan Gerdusky, joined by senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, Hadley Heath Manning. I want to thank you both for joining us. We've got a long way to go here. Hadley Heath, let me start with you first of all. There are people saying that Ted Cruz is now on the downside. He's done. Wait a minute. This is a guy who's pretty smart. He's been backed into a corner. Do you go with those who say Donald Trump has such an insurmountable lead here that Cruz can do nothing to blunt it? Now, let's remember that these polls are typically telephone polls, whether it's a cell phone or a landline to a home. They don't tell us a lot about the propensity of these voters to actually show up at the Iowa caucus or at the New Hampshire primary. And Ted Cruz has had, from the very beginning, a strong ground game in those states. So Donald Trump, although he's attracted a lot of support from non-traditional voters, that might actually be a problem for him as the traditional primary season comes upon us. Ted Cruz and his camp, they have a lot of experience running campaigns. They know how the system works. All right. Now, let's also get then to some of the polls here because they show us that Christie is fading. Rubio is fading. But here's Kasich. Let's talk about this for just a minute here, Ryan. We are hearing Kasich's name again. Not only that, but we're hearing that some Democrats may really fear him more than anybody else. You buying any of that? Kasich, well, if he was the nominee, would certainly win Ohio, which would be very, very good. But I, it, this is a lot of what Kasich did, which is, which is a massive media buy in New Hampshire. And one poll showed him at 20 percent, so it propelled him in the polling average. But there's very little to it. He's still only in the mid-teens, early teens. Um, and that was one poll as an outlier. I don't really buy it. I think that Trump is the tremendous force to beat in New Hampshire. He's giving rallies that 20, 30,000 people are waiting outside for in the snow. Um, in Iowa right now. Uh, those are dedicated uh, supporters, and he has, according to polls, the most dedicated supporters of any candidate in the, in the race right now. Hadley Heath, let's bring Donald Trump into this, because there's talk of the evangelicals right now, and I'm going to go back to Ted Cruz as well, now that we're changing up on the evangelical vote. There are those people believing that it is a battle now for the evangelicals. We always thought for a long time that Ted Cruz pretty much had that locked. Others are saying that, wait a minute here, Donald Trump is making inroads. Again, are you buying those pollsters that say that that is the case? No, I think you can look at the top line numbers of a poll, but more importantly, you dig into it and you find out what's actually going on. And with evangelical support for Donald Trump, you compare that to support of overall GOP primary voters, and the unchurched voters are actually much more likely to support Donald Trump than church-going evangelical voters. So this is something that starkly divides the inside of the Republican base, which has several different camps from Tea Party, evangelical, establishment, economic conservatives. And so bringing all those people together, and I would include foreign policy conservatives as well, is a challenge whomever the nominee ultimately is. Ryan Orrin Hatch, the most senior Republican in the Senate, said today, I think we'll lose if Ted Cruz is our nominee. How do you take that comment? Yeah, um, you know, the establishment, what they're doing right now is they are signing the terms of their, of their surrender. Um, and so they're sitting there and saying, we're going to lose. Jeb Bush and Mark Rubio are not going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. It will be Ted Cruz or Donald Trump. We need to get in bed with one, and they do not want to get in bed with Ted Cruz. All right, so then who's Donald the smart Trump one to get in bed with? Are you, I think you just answered. You're saying that absolutely not. No way they're going to get in bed with Ted Cruz. Not a chance at all. They're going to sit there and support Donald Trump. They're going to get behind him, and I think he will be the Republican nominee in 2016. I wish you could see Hadley Heath's reaction right now because she's got a smile on her face and she's shaking her head no go ahead Hadley well I think it's with a, a great deal of reluctance that members of the so-called GOP establishment endorse either of these candidates whether it's Donald Trump or Ted Cruz there's been a hard-fought battle but ultimately those candidates that we call establishment that actually some of them started out as Tea Partiers like Marco Rubio and they aren't you know necessarily rhinos or moderates when it comes to their voting record but when we talk about Chris Christie or John Kasich Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush their biggest problem is one another. They're fighting, they're, they're splitting a part of the GOP 
primary base that could, could surround one of them and coalesce around one of those candidates to, to provide a real race for Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. But unfortunately, they're divided against one another. Quick answer. Five seconds from both of you. Hadley Heath Manning, right now, who are you picking to win Iowa? Iowa. I believe Ted Cruz wins in Iowa. Ryan, do you? <laughs> and we lost Ryan at that moment. Honest to goodness, it's not his fault. Technically speaking, we lost it, so we're going to have to wait to get his answer down the road. Hadley Heath Manning, Ryan Gerdusky, thanks a lot for joining us. Strange how things happen like that. Elected American leadership, in effect, poisoning its own people and not giving a damn. Jerry Doyle talks about that and more when we come back right here on The Hardline.